trouble sometimes is hard to bear. As long as you know that Jesus is there, afflictions they will come. As long as you keep your helmet on, look up, it won't be long. He sitting on the throne. Yeah, 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 you got to know what you know, like I know, I know, I've got Jesus. Ooh, you got to know what you know, like I know, I know, I've got Jesus. And I wrote me a letter, and he said that, you, you know, y'all really teaching good, but, uh, you're doing an abominable thing. You're worshiping the sun to the east. I know he's listening. I want to ask him one question. Where is the sun at this point in time? It's not in the east, is it? It's straight overhead. This is 12 noon. That's right. Second thing is, brother, whoever you are, he, wouldn't, he wrote me an anonymous letter. Whoever you are, send me your telephone number so I can take you to the Bible and teach you. The Lord. Solomon made a prayer when he yeah. built the temple. And in his prayer, he said, if the people be scattered, and if they look toward this temple and pray toward this temple, will you hear him? And the Lord later on tell him, yeah, I would hear them. And David even said, before the temple was built, I will pray towards your temple. And what do you think that yeah, my, uh, 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 Daniel was doing when, he, when they told him not to pray to no other God for so long. He went home and he opened his window. He was praying toward the temple. So that's, where, that's what we're doing. We're praying toward Jerusalem and the temple spot. And again, too, the next time you think about us praying something, think about Passover. We open up with Passover. That's the night, ain't it? When the sun go down, ain't it? Right. I wonder where the sun is being. Now we have the reading of the law. We're going to start in Exodus, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 17. Okay. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, until the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord would not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor as manservant, nor as maidservant, nor as ox, nor as ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Now let's go in the Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, read verses 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, 
for this is the whole duty of man. But God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Let's go to Revelation chapter 22, verses 14 and 15. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. But without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh the lie. So we see, sisters and brothers, the commandments, that is the real key to salvation. Of course, after you uh, recognize and put yourself under the blood of It's good to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day. And I was reminded to speak to the sisters and brothers in the Israel of God in Riverdale. Good afternoon. <laughs> and as I say, it's always good to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day. And we're going to deal, sisters and brothers, with, with the title of this lesson is Psalms, the Book of Jesus. Psalms, the Book of Jesus. You know, we as Hebrew Israelites have always rejected Jesus. I mean, when you go in the new book, what they do? Apostles got beaten, everything else. Some got killed because of Jesus. And right now, sisters and brothers, in these last days, and I do mean last days, because I really believe that I'm going to see the end of this, and you are too, whether you know it or not. But the whole thing is, in these uh, 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 final days, if you want to start a fight with some Hebrew Israelites, walk up to some of the groups on there and say, praise God in the name of Jesus. Then you better duck. But so what, what's so funny about it, sisters and brothers, all of this, these things that they read in the Old Testament, Jesus was the one that dictated them. And this Book of Psalms is about Jesus. We're going to show you how Psalms call it, and a few other prophets we're going to throw in, but, but most of all, Psalms that let you know that this is about Jesus, but this whole writing is about Jesus. We're going to show you that. Let's start first at John, the fifth chapter. John, chapter five. See, because we have to teach the word of God. Too many people are getting caught up in the conversation and beliefs without knowledge. And we will not allow that to happen at the Israel of God, sisters and brothers. If it is written, we'll teach it. If it is not written, we will not teach it. It's all that simple. But we as a people have always had him, but we had a problem with him before he came in, in, his, in his father's name, which was Jesus. Israel ain't never wanted to follow God. Look at all the Israelites that left Egypt. All of them that was 20 years old and upward did not get into the promised land because they didn't want to obey God. Israel told God, we are all lords. We don't have to come back to you. <laughs> we said that. Mm. So it ain't no great big mystery to me that my Hebrew brothers dislike Jesus. But I tell you what, the mystery is going to be on them because when they go to the wilderness, you're going to have to go eyeball, eyeball at this guy. But we're going to show you what he said. St. John chapter 5, and we're going to start reading at verse 33. 5 and 33, read it. He said unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. Now, the people one went to John, John the Baptist, because they want to know that from John the Baptist, this, is this the guy? Is what he's talking about true? He said, you sent to John. And, you know, and to, to, to uh, vet me. Skip down to verse 36. And what did he say? Go ahead. But I have a greater witness than that of John. But I have a greater witness than that of John. Go ahead. For the works which the Father has given to me uh -huh. to finish, Go ahead. the same works that I do, uh -huh. bear witness of me that the he's, Father he's a, has look. sent me. He said, look, the works, I have a greater witness than John. The works that the Father has given me to do, they are my witnesses. I'm going to do them, and we're going to show you this, sisters and brothers. 
Because if they had understood the Old Testament, if they had understood the law, they would recognize Jesus right away. Skip down to verse 39 and read it. Search the scriptures. Search the scripture. For in them you think you have eternal life. For in them you think you have eternal life. Go ahead. And they are they which testify of me. And they are they that testify of me. That's what Jesus let you know. You want to know who I am? Go to the scripture. We're not going to go to all of them, but we can go to all of them. I've said many times, I can preach Genesis, uh, uh, Jesus from Genesis to Malachi and never get out of the Old Testament. But this, sisters and brothers, this book was written by David, but it was written about Jesus, sisters and brothers. Now let's go and check some of them out, because he said, I don't need John the Baptist to testify on me. The works that the Father gave me to do, they will testify of me. And we're going to prove that. Let's go into Psalms, the 40th chapter of Psalms. Psalm the 40th chapter. We're going to show you, sisters and brothers, that this book is airtight when it comes to Jesus, and as he said, it testifies of him. Psalm chapter 40, and we're going to start reading at verse 6. Psalm 40 and verse 6. Because what we're going to do is prove the word of God, sisters and brothers. We're not about smooth conversation. And certainly, I'm a long ways from an elegant orator. <laughs> However, what we read, that's what you're going get, to get you salvation. And if you don't read it, you're going to get cut off because it is clearly printed. You're going to be judged by the things that are written in these books according to your work. Verse 6, go ahead. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Uh huh. Mine ears has thou opened. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. My ears thou hast opened. Go ahead and read. Burnt offering and sin offering has thou not required. And he said, burnt offering and sin offering thou hast not required. And I mean, he didn't, sister and brother, but go ahead and read. Then said I, Lo, uh -huh. I come in the volume of the book. Go ahead. It is written to me. Go ahead. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yeah, thy law is within my heart. So now, this is the word of God that we just read. And Jesus told you, the works that I do, they testify of me. Why? Because they've already been written of him. Now let's go and pursue this. Let's go into Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Hebrews chapter 10. Because this is so clear and so easy. Whole bunch of conversation is not necessary. Like a lot, a lot of brothers I see now teaching, they do more talking than they do read. Some of them come out of here, and I say, where you get that from? You didn't get it from here. <laughs> you talk too much, you're going to lie. <laughs> so what you do is you read. Hebrews chapter 10. And verse 1, 10 and 1, go ahead and read. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, go ahead, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually uh -huh. make the comers there unto perfect. See, we're trying to get salvation. And once you get salvation, once you're saved, you will be perfect, sister and brother, because you will be God. He said, but the law... That uh, of animal sacrifice, this is what we're talking here, it can't make you perfect. Why? Skip now to verse 4. Verse 4 and go ahead. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. That's why I couldn't make you possible. It, it, it was not possible because I don't care how many animals you sacrifice, it couldn't take away sin. Go ahead and read. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he said, Go ahead. Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, uh -huh. but a body as thou prepared me. He needed a body to die, but go ahead and read. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, uh -huh. thou hast had no pleasure. Looked like we read that somewhere, didn't we? Right. Go ahead and read. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. Uh -huh. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. Look like we read that. That's right. Go ahead. Above when he said, sacrifice and offering, and burnt offerings and offerings for sin, 
thou wouldest not. Go ahead. Neither had his pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. That's the law of animal sacrifice. He didn't have no pleasure in them because they couldn't remove sin. Go ahead and read. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. Uh -huh. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. First what? The first covenant that God made with, with uh, Moses and Israel. But it didn't do no good. Two components in that covenant that was there, and it didn't help. One of them was fringes. Didn't do no good. So the Lord said, I got to come up and win a way to keep from killing these people because they're going to keep sinning. Then he instituted animal sacrifice. Deal didn't do no good, just made you a little broker. So he needed something to sacrifice. So when he came to do the will of God, he took away the first covenant that he might establish the second covenant. How did he do that? Go ahead and read. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. That's how we're sanctified, sisters and brothers, through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. But he told you in Psalm, the 40th chapter, that he came to do that. And that was the will of the Father, that he become a sin offering. Now let's go back to Psalms, chapter 72. Psalm 72. Now we're going to take us a look at this thing, sisters and brothers. People think that this is David talking about himself. You couldn't be further from the truth. Psalm chapter 72. Psalm chapter 72. Because when you understand these things that we're dealing with today, then you will know that Jesus is the one. That's why when the, when the, when the uh, 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 Pharisees Ask Jesus, you know, uh, you uh, 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 give us a sign. They want to give a sign that he's the Christ. He's an evil and a just, uh, uh, adulterous generation seeking out the sign. And I ain't going to give you but one sign. That's the sign of Jonah the prophet. As Jonah's in the bed of the well for three days and three nights, so will the son of man be in the grave for three days and three nights. That's the heart of the earth. So now, if you want proof who Jesus is, if you need a testimony who Jesus is, you about to find out today. 72 and 1. Go ahead and read. Give the king thy judgments, O God. And, then, and this, I'm going to show you this is not talking about King David. Because most people don't understand that it, Jesus is going to be the king of Israel. Big surprise to my Hebrew brothers. Go ahead and read. Give the king thy judgments, O God and thy righteousness unto the king's son. Uh -huh. He shall judge thy people with righteousness, and thy poor with judgment. Go ahead. The mountains shall bring peace to the people, and the little hills by righteousness. So this is the king's son here, but he's still talking about the king. Go ahead and read. He shall judge the poor of the people. He shall save the children of the needy. Uh -huh. He and, and shall break in pieces the oppressor. And he's going to come and he's going to judge the people righteous and he is going to break in pieces the oppressor. Skip down to verse 8 and read it. He shall have dominion also from sea to sea uh -huh. and from the river until the ends of the earth. And he shall have dominion also from sea to sea and from the river. I know that's the river Jordan to the end of the earth. It's not going to be a Place on the earth that he is not going to dominate, sister and brother. He's going to rule this planet with an absoluteness. That means ain't nobody's going to get in it. So let's pursue this guy that's going to do this. Let's go into Zechariah, the ninth chapter. Zechariah, the ninth chapter. The Lord put it like this. So we will be for sure and know what we're doing. I don't want to keep going all my life, I believe this and I believe that. And I believe this and I believe that. Sooner or later, you got to know what's going on. Because if you don't know what's going on, when the time comes to flee, you won't know it. That's why the Lord give you sign. So you will be absolute in your movement when it's time to move. 
Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 9. 9 and 9. Okay, go ahead. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Uh-huh. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Go ahead. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. That's, that's Jerusalem and Zion. Go ahead and read. He is just uh -huh. in heaven's salvation. Go ahead. Lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a coat, the foal of an ass. That couldn't be talking about David, could it? Mm-mm. Go ahead and read. And I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim. This is what this king, this one that come in on his ass said. He going to cut off the chariot from Ephraim? Go ahead. And the horse from Jerusalem. And the horse from Jerusalem. And the battle bow shall be cut off. Go ahead. And he shall speak peace unto the heathen. Then he going to speak peace to the nation. That's once he get to whooping on him. Go ahead and read. And his dominion shall be from sea, even to sea. And his dominion going to be from sea, even to sea. Go ahead and read. And from the river, even to the ends of the earth. Until the third planet in, the, in heaven. To the ends of the earth. From the river even to the end of the earth. But before he do that, he, something has to happen. Go ahead and read the next verse. As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water. But first he had to release some spiritual prisoners, sisters and brothers, before he ruled from sea to sea. Let's go and see who this king is that says king of, of uh, uh, Israel. Also, he showed up riding on an ass. That's what you call humility. Let's go into Matthew, the 21st chapter, and pursue this guy. Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21. Because everything that we read here, sisters and brothers, that's why I know See, the, the, uh, you know, Peter tell, tell us that we have a most sure word of prophecy. That's why I know if something is out of whack in the New Testament, because I go to the sure word of prophecy. I don't mean that something is out of whack, but I'm just letting you know. Matthew 21 and verse 1. Go ahead and read. And when they drew nigh to Jerusalem, and will come to Bethphage unto the Mount of Olives. Then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, uh -huh. Go into the village over against you. Go ahead. And straightway you shall find an ass tied and a coat with her. Go ahead. Loose them and bring them unto me. Uh -huh. And if any man say aught unto you, you shall say, The Lord had need of them. And straightway he will send them. He said, Now I want you to go in the village and you're going to see an ass. A female and her and her coat. I want you to loose them and bring them to me. If anybody say, ask you what you're doing, you said a master have need of them. Go ahead and read. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Go ahead. Tell ye the daughter of Zion, uh -huh. behold, thy king cometh unto thee, uh -huh. meek and sitting upon an ass, and a coat uh, and a coat, the foal of an ass. Now that. Hooked him up with the one in Psalm that said he is going to rule from sea to sea. And we go to Zechariah and we find out the one that's going to rule from sea to sea is going to come in on an ass. Ain't but one like this, sister and brother, but go ahead and read. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them uh -huh. and brought the ass and go the ahead. coat and put on them their clothes and they set him thereon. Uh -huh. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. Go ahead. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Uh -huh. Hosanna in the highest. So now, this confirms what we read in, in Psalms, don't it? But the thing about it is, he came in early to die and become a sin offering. And that's why I said in Psalm, the ninth chapter, said, By thy blood have you set forth the prisoners that was in the pit where there was no water. In other words, we was on a death sentence. He had to die first. But after he died, sisters and brothers, and gone back and sat at the right hand of the Father, he going to come back 
Then they're going to take, take down this earth and rule from sea to sea. Same Jesus, sister and brother. The whole story is told. Let's go a little further in Matthew. Let's go into Matthew, the 26th chapter, since we're here. Matthew chapter 26. And we're going to start at verse 36. Matthew chapter 26. And we're starting at verse 36. 26 and 36. Okay, go ahead. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane and saith unto the disciples, uh -huh. Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. See, that Jesus, this flesh was on him, sister and brother. Jesus didn't want to die. You know, I hear people always tell me, I don't mind dying. That's the biggest lie you've ever been told. <laughs> Next time somebody says, I don't mind dying, you should pull up a pistol and point it at them and watch them. Oh, Lord, please have mercy. This flesh don't want to go no place. Mm -mm. And when Jesus had it on him, it didn't want to go no place. But go ahead and read. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee uh -huh. and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Go ahead. Then said he unto them, my soul is exceeding sorrowful, uh -huh. even unto death. Uh -huh. Carry ye here and watch with me. Now he knew he had to die, but he was real sad. Because, you know, he's walking around, he's intermingling with men, and he's teaching. He got his compadre, the apostles, walking around with him. He know he's finna give this up. And he was sad, even though he knew he had to do it. So he said, come. He said, I'm real sad. Go ahead and read. And he went a little farther and fell on his face. Go ahead. And prayed, saying, oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Uh, no, nah, he... he <laughs> He's trying to figure out an angle to get out of dying. He said, oh, my father, if it is possible, and he knew it wasn't possible, but this flesh is whooping on him now. Let this cup pass from me. But go ahead. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. He had to lean now totally on the will of the father. That's right. Nevertheless, not as I will, because if he... If he could have what he will, he wouldn't have got killed. He'd have got old and died of old age like the rest of us trying to do. Mm -hmm. But he said, but nevertheless, not my will, but thy will, Father. Because he know that his will was kind of like compromised by this flesh. That's right. Skip down to verse 42. 42 and read it. And he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, uh -huh. Oh, my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, Thy will be done. He went again. He's still acting. Maybe there's a crack in the back door that I can slip <laughs> out of this thing. But he went back to the will of the Father. That's right. Skip down to verse 44 and read. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, uh -huh. saying the same word. I mean, and, and other book would tell you he was sweating. <laughs> he had heavy sweat coming off of him. Mm. He wanted to live. And he went a third time and said the same thing. Mm. If it's possible, Father, mm. please let this cup pass from me. But if not, I'll drink it. What cup is that? Let's go into 116th chapter of Psalms and find out. Psalm 116. Psalm 116, because we want to know everything that the Lord wants us to know. And what the Lord don't want us to know, we won't know. You know, the thing come up, brother's telling me to come up in, in one of the uh, 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 questions and answers in Atlanta. The thing come up about what Paul, somebody read what Paul knew in, Paul said, we know in part and we see in part. And that's correct. But one brother said, well, that means we got so much, we got some more stuff to learn. I'll tell you what you know. You know how to get salvation. Once you get salvation, then you can do what Paul said. You can run, learn the rest of that stuff when you're in, 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 the, in the kingdom. So when somebody tell you, well, we got some more to know, you say, if I know what's in this book, I don't have no more to learn to get salvation. It is in the book. 
So don't be telling me some hidden knowledge that we don't know about to get <laughs> salvation. That's what it's going to, sister and brother. Exactly. Maybe I've been in this word too long. No, no. But that's why I get on questions and answers. I find out a lot of time when, when people call in questions, I know where it's coming from. And I just jump in front of the brothers and deal with it. That is the, I don't know, the handicap or the, or the uh, 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 advantage of being around for 50-something years in this world. You done seen everything coming. Psalm 116, and we're going to start reading that verse 1. Psalm 115 and verse 1, we're going to, because we're going to, uh, we, 116 and verse 1, we're going to see what this cup is that Jesus went and prayed three times to see if it could be removed from his mouth. Verse 1, go ahead. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplication. Uh-huh. Because he has inclined his ear to me. Uh-huh. Therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. Is he going to do it as long as he lives? Go ahead and read. The sorrows of death compass me. Uh-huh. And the pains of hell got hold upon me. Uh-huh. I found trouble and sorrow. Now, this is the Lord talking about the mouth of David. He said, look, the sorrows of death compass me. The pains of the grave has taken hold of me. He said, I found death and sorrow. That's why he told them, guys, I was very exceedingly sorry. Did they say that? That's right. Go ahead and read. Then called I upon the name of the Lord. Go ahead. O oh Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. He said, now he said, I deliver my soul. I don't want to die. Skip down to verse 10. Verse 10 and go ahead. I believed, therefore have I spoken. I was greatly afflicted. I believe what you sent me to do and what you told me, Father. So when I spoke your word, I was greatly afflicted. We have some of the apostles quoted that too. Because they was greatly afflicted. And I warn you, sometimes, sisters and brothers, when you teach this truth, you will get greatly afflicted by some people of your own household. That's right. So when you do, remember, you, have not, you are not different from your master. He said, I believe, therefore have I spoken. I was greatly afflicted. Go ahead and read. I said in my haste, uh -huh. all men are liars. And he said, he said, I said in my haste, all men are liars. He wasn't lying about that. <laughs> but then he couldn't go on men. He had to go on the Lord, the Father that sent him. Go ahead. What shall I render unto the Lord? So he asked the question, what shall I render unto the Lord? Go ahead. For all his benefits toward me. For all his benefits toward me. What shall I render unto him? He going to tell you. Go ahead and read. I will take the cup of salvation uh -huh. and call upon the name of the Lord. So what should I render? I'm going to go ahead and drink this cup of salvation. I'm going to go ahead and die. Because I said I come in the volume of the books to do it. Therefore, he vowed. Go ahead and read. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now. I will pay my vows to the Lord now where? In the presence of all his people. He died in Jerusalem, didn't he? That's right. That's the cup that Jesus wanted to get away from. But he knew he had to do that to save the whole creation. And when they come to make him drink of this cup, let's see what happened. Let's go into St. John, the 18th chapter. St. John, chapter 18. You know, some brothers ask me, Brother Boy, how are you able to put them lesson together like that? I said, hey, I just do it, but then it finally done on me. I am not. The Lord is the one that directs me. And this is one thing that you got to understand. The Lord is the one that gives the increase, and he is the one that's directing everything. He directs me. And let me know, hey, I want you to show this and use this to explain this. So the people can explain, can understand that this word is from me and it is not from you. St. John 18, and we're going to start at verse 2. St. John chapter 18 and verse 2. Okay, go ahead. And Judas also which betrayed him knew the place, for Jesus oftentimes 
resorted thither with his disciples. So he went out to the uh, uh, garden of, uh, 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 what do you call it? Yes. Yes. Gethsemane. Gethsemane. You know, that's why he was doing that praying. You understand? Right. He knew they were going to come get him that night. Judas wasn't with him, but he knew where they, where he already resort to. So he went out there with, uh, with, uh, 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 to get him because he was leading the people that were sent from the high priest. Go ahead. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, uh -huh. coming thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. And they come out there to get it. We're not going to tell you, show you why Jesus showed his power. We're just going to deal with the lesson. So skip down with verse 10. Verse 10 and go ahead. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it uh -huh. and smote the high priest's servant. Now he got this guy, he pulled a sword. Peter pulled a sword and cut off the cat's ear. But other scripture tell you that Jesus healed the ear. Right on the spot. But go ahead and read. And cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Uh huh. Then said Jesus unto Peter, put up thy sword into the sheaf. Now pay attention to this. Look, Peter, put up thy sword into his sheath. Why? Go ahead. The cup which my father has given me, uh -huh. shall I not drink it? The cup which my father given me, shall I not drink it? He know that he had to die. Finish that, verse 12. Go ahead. Then the band and the captain and officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him. And they bound him. If I read it all, we could have read what they said. We looking for Jesus. He said, I'm he, and the guy stumbled back and fell on the ground. They got up again. He said, we're looking for you. I said, I am he, and they fell on the ground and let them know, you are not taking me. I am going with you. <laughs> because the cup which the father gave him to drink, he said, I'm going to drink it. Even though I know all men are lying. He said, but what will I render unto the Father? I will drink of the cup of salvation and I will pay my vow. Mm -hmm. Them guys couldn't have did nothing to him. Mm -mm. Let's go back to Psalms chapter 22. Psalms chapter 22. Huh? Uh, what'd you say? I missed something? Matthew. Uh, Matthew 27. I'm sorry. Sometimes I get all excited. And, get, and forget about it. People say, well, just because you're getting old, I ain't that old sister and brother. David, Moses was 120. The Lord said when he died, his vision wasn't blood, neither was his mobility impaired. I'm reading this book. You see me with some glasses on? <laughs> Do you see me walking around with a walker or walking stick? No. Think about that when you think I'm, I'm down for it. And don't mess with me, because you might find out I got something else, too. <laughs> they got some young brother talking about we need old, old guys need to take, move out the way and let the young, young lions take over. Like I said, with no teeth. Matthews 27. Matthew 27, we're going to start at verse 35. Matthew 27 and verse 35. Yeah, I get caught up in the own lesson sometimes. Sometimes when I'm putting these lessons together, I get all excited, and I mean, I'll be gone. You know why? Is it because it's the Lord that's showing this to me. I get caught up in it. I be learning. After all these years, I'm still learning stuff I get excited about. I have knowledge of it. But now the Lord is bringing the understanding to me. Even now. I watch brothers, I watch brothers on television and a lot on, on the, uh, 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 YouTube, and they be talking. They be quoting scriptures and going here and going there, but the understanding is null and void. I be pulling. Come on now. Just like a football game, and they don't get there. <laughs> verse 35, Matthew 27 and verse 35. Okay, go ahead. And they crucified him and parted his garments, uh -huh. casting lots, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, 
and upon my vexture did they cast lots. Now even that the prophets told was going to happen. They had, you know, when them soldiers would crucify people and they take their clothes, the nice stuff, they, they, I guess material was hard in those days, they split it up among one another. But he had a nice robe, they didn't want to deal, didn't tie it up, so they cast lots who would get the robe. They cast lots up on my venture. Skip down to verse 37 and read. And set up over his head his accus accusation written. Uh huh. This is Jesus, the king of the Jews. Everybody knew who Israel's king was. But we don't know. Skip down to verse 41 and go ahead. Likewise, also the chief priest mocking him. With the scribes and elders said, uh -huh. he saved others, himself he cannot save. Ain't that up? The chief reef and, and, and the scribes, they mocking him. He saved others, he can't, but he can't save himself. Go ahead and read. If he be the king of Israel, uh -huh. let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. Now see, that let you know that these chief priests, these are the religious people. They supposed to know that this was going to happen to him. And the last thing they would be doing was mocking him. That's right. They'd be weeping and praising God all at the same time. Weeping because he had to go through this, but praising God that you know that this thing is going to be straightened out. And the Romans ain't going to be ruling over them all the time. Mm -hmm. But go ahead and read. He trusted in God. Uh-huh. Let him deliver him now. Go ahead. If he would have him. And, and then, look at what he's saying. He trusts in God will let God deliver him now. That's if God would have him. Mm. Finish that. For he said, I am the son of God. And then nobody paid no attention to that. That scared Pilate, though. That's right. That scared the Gentile, but it never scared Israel. Skip down to verse 45. Verse 45 in your head. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. Uh-huh, and that was even prophesied. But we can't put everything in here. Go ahead and read. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, uh -huh. Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Go ahead. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Now, we're going to show you, sisters and brothers. This is, you know, we, Jesus, this is his flesh that's pushing him. And he knew this flesh was going to push him. That's why he said, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? even though he knew he had to do that. Now let's go read it. Let's go into Psalm chapter 22. That's why I told him I don't need John the Baptist to testify me. The works that my father gave me, they will testify me. In other words, when you see me doing these works and fulfilling this, the word, then you know who I am. I don't need John the Baptist to do that. Right. He didn't come to testify to tell you. He come. He came to straighten out the crooked path so you wouldn't get cut off. That's what John the Baptist came make straight the coming of the Lord. Twenty two and one, Psalm chapter twenty two, and we're gonna start at verse one. We're gonna see how this starts out. Go ahead and read it. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Wait a minute. We just read that, didn't That's we? That's right. Just before he died. My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? He had to say that. You know why? Because he had to prove in the testimony that the testimony of Jesus is the word of prophecy. Right. The book called it spirit of prophecy, but it means the word of prophecy. Finish that verse. Why art thou so far from helping me and uh -huh. from the words of my roaring? Go ahead, skip now to verse 7 and go ahead. All they, all they that see me laugh me to scorn. Uh -huh. They shoot out the lip. Go ahead. They shake the head saying, uh -huh. he trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. Look like we read that somewhere, yes, didn't we? we did. Skip down to verse 15 and go ahead. My strength is dried up like a pot shirt. Go ahead. And my tongue cleave into my jaw. Uh-huh. And thou hast brought me into the dust of death. He was, he was reliving what's going to happen to him before he got there. Go ahead and read. For dogs have compassed me. Oh, oh man, he was calling somebody dogs. That's what they were. 
But dogs have compassed me. Go ahead. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. Uh huh. They pierced my hands and my feet. You know, I always wondered why. You know, when the Romans put people on the cross, they didn't nail spikes in them. They tied them with ropes. And then they would die slow and the buzzards and the, the crows would have, have at them. But Jesus, they nailed his hand and his feet. Now I know why. They had to do that because he said, they pierced my hands and my feet. That set him apart from anybody else that was crucified. He was the only one that was crucified with spikes and nails. Go ahead and read. I may tell all my bones. They look and stare, stare upon me. Uh-huh. They part my garments among them. They parted my garments among them. And cast lots upon my vexture. Oh, so now we know what that was prophesied at, don't we? When he said they parted my garments among them and they cast lots upon my vesture. It had been written. This is the Lord talking through the mouth of Jesus, sisters and brothers. I mean, all of it is there. Let's go into 6 and 9 chapter of Psalm. Psalm chapter 6 and 9. It is all there. That's when I read this book. It's just like when the Lord calls me to write that book, The Four Winds of Heaven. When I wrote that book, I got scared while I was writing it <laughs> because it was so accurate prophecy. God called it in order. He even called the inner reaction and the workings of the Greek Empire about how Alexander, Alexander the Great going to fall, how his general is going to get to fighting over it, and it's going to end up in the hand of four of the generals. I said, good grief, this, 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 this is too much here. I kind of wanted to stop, but then I was too scared to stop. I said, so I'm going to finish it. Psalm 69 and verse 1. Go ahead and read. Save me, O God, for the waters are come in unto my soul. Now, all of this was centered around his crucifixion. Skip down to verse 20 now. Verse 20, and go ahead. Reproach has broken my heart, uh -huh. and I am full of heaviness. Go ahead. And I looked for some to take pity, but there was none. No, they was down there mocking him. Go ahead and read. And for comforters, but I found none. Go ahead. They gave me also gall for my meat. Uh-huh. And in my thirst, they gave me vinegar to drink. And they gave me also gall for my meat. And in my thirst, they also gave me vinegar to drink. Who would not overlook that small thing? Mm. Let's see if the Lord overlooked it. Let's go into John, the 19th chapter, St. John chapter 19. I just want to let you know, sister and brother, the Lord was... Very, very careful. He wanted us to understand who he was dealing with. And if we smart, we pay some attention. Right. John chapter 19. St. John chapter 19. And we got read, we're going to start reading at verse 28. 19. And verse 28. Okay, read it. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said. Now look, he was on the cross now. They didn't crucify him. He said, now after this, he knew that everything was accomplished. What, was the, and what the scripture said, he had one little thing he had to do. Started back from the top. Go ahead. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, uh -huh. I thirst. He simply said, I thirst. In all of that pain, spikes in your hand and your feet, thorns on your head and they done beating, your head bleeding, your hand bleeding, your feet bleeding, mm. still he had to say he had to fulfill prophecy. That's why I said when I feel bad, that ain't nothing. That, that is not even an option. I'm going to walk up here and I'm going to preach this gospel. If he can do this under all this pain, the little pain I have is a cakewalk. Amen. So that the scripture might be fulfilled, he said, I thirst. And what happened? Now there was a set vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar uh -huh. and put it upon hyssop 
and put it to his mouth. So what they did, they got a stick and got a sponge and dipped it in vinegar they had there and put it up to his mouth. And what happened? Go ahead. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, uh -huh. he said, it is finished. He said, when he received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And what did he do? And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. He fulfilled prophecy to the moment that he died. Mm, mm, mm. That's why I said, I don't need John to testify of me. The works that the Father gave me to do, they will testify of me. Mm. Who else has done that, sister? Even down to the vinegar. Even down to the vinegar. But we're not through yet. Let's go into 100, let's go into 16th chapter of Psalm. Psalm chapter 16. See, we, we know what we're doing here, sister and brother. We're not playing. Right. You get a lot of people get around playing and, and they want to do stuff. People tell me, brother boy, sometime, man, you're just too hard. You didn't come here to, to know how hard or how soft I am. You come here and learn this book. Well, you said things in eight and eight people. Big deal. God alienated all of Israel. Everybody that came out of Egypt was alienated. That's why he killed them all. That was 20 years and up, but except for Joshua and Caleb. What do I care about alienating somebody? You going to walk away and don't show up? I put a for sale sign on the building. And do like an old man should do. Go home and retire. And relax now. 16 and verse 8. 16 and verse 8. Okay, go ahead. I have set the Lord always before me. Uh-huh. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Go ahead. Therefore my heart is glad, and my glory rejoices. Uh-huh. My flesh also shall rest in hope. Now he's a, I'm, I'm the Lord is always before me, and he's rejoiced. And his heart is glad, and he said, and his flesh shall rest in hope. He's talking about he ain't going in the grave and not knowing whether he's going to come out or not. We live by hope. So he said, my flesh shall rest in hope. Go ahead and read. But thou would not leave my soul in hell. But thou would not leave my soul in hell. Neither would thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Hell, in this case, comes from the word shuel, which means grave. And corruption means decomposed. You're not going to leave my soul in the grave. Neither are you going to allow me to decompose this body that you made me, that I had to come and get killed in. Go ahead and read. Thou wilt show me the path of life. Uh -huh. In thy presence is fullness of joy. Go ahead. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. You're going to show me the path of life. And he said, and at thy right hand, there shall be pleasant pleasures evermore. Why is, and go ahead. That's it. Now, what you mean at his right hand? And he wouldn't suffer his soul. To see corruption. Why did he say that? Well, let's go into Acts and find out. Let's go into Acts, the second chapter. Acts chapter 2. Because when you understand this Bible, sisters and brothers, you understand every act that happens in it and where it came from. That's why Paul said we know in part. Not we know this, but what we know here, we know all of it. There was some stuff that we don't know. Because when John was writing Revelation, you had seven thunders say itself. That's right. The Lord's the seal of the book. That's right. It's not for you. Then he said. A little later on, they're going to run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Danny, Daniel wrote a lot of stuff that he didn't understand. But we understand it. Why? It's because it's for us. So I'll start at verse 22, Acts 2 and 22. Go ahead and read it. Ye men of Israel, uh -huh. hear these words. Go ahead. Jesus of Nazareth. A man approved to God among you by miracles Go ahead. and wonders and signs, which God did by him 
in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. You know, he says he proved to you by signs. What an one. What the sign he's talking about. Because everything that God had written that he was going to do, he did it. Go ahead and read. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel uh -huh. and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and stained. Now stained. we know it by count, determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God because we've been reading it, haven't we? Go ahead. Whom God has raised up, uh -huh. have loosed the pains of death. Go ahead. Because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. Go ahead. For David speaking concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face. Uh -huh. For he is on my right hand, uh -huh. and I should not be moved. Go ahead. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope. He said that by the mouth of David, yes, didn't he? He did. Go ahead and read. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, uh -huh. neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. So you ain't going to leave my soul in the grave, neither are you going to allow my body to decompose. That's why I come out of there in three days, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. Thou was made known to me the ways of life. Go ahead. Thou shalt thou should make me full of joy with thy countenance. Uh-huh. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David. Go ahead. That he is both dead and buried. Uh-huh. And his sepulcher is with us until this day. So David wasn't talking about himself, no, was he? he wasn't. Go ahead. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he will raise up Christ to sit on his throne. Index that in your mind, because we're going to read that later in Psalm. But go ahead and read. He seen this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, uh -huh. that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. He see, he spoke of it. He ain't going to leave him in hell, which is great. Neither is he going to allow him to decompose. Let's go into Psalms chapter 30. Psalms chapter 30. See, sisters and brothers, you are not listening to me. You are listening to the word of God. I don't say, well, you know, I think the Lord wanted us to, I think the Lord meant, uh-uh, he meant what he said. We're going to read what he mean. Psalm chapter 30. Psalm chapter 30. Well, I heard a brother, brother told me, a brother said one time about some of the brothers that got the outline classes where they all teach the same thing. I said, I take issue with that. If I taught the same thing, then I wouldn't want no, I'd be in the same congregation. <laughs> 30 and 1, go ahead and read. I will extol thee, O Lord, uh -huh. for thou hast lifted me up uh -huh. and has not made my foes to rejoice over me. Go ahead. O Lord, my God, I cried unto thee, uh -huh. and thou hast healed me. He said, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. Go ahead and read. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Go ahead. Thou hast kept me alive, uh -huh. that I should not go down to the pit. So he brought up his soul from the grave. That's from hell. And he did not allow him to decompose. He knew that he was going to come out the grave. Before he went in there, but this flesh got the kicking on him and he didn't want to do it. That's right. But then he had to do it. And that's an example to us. A lot of things we might want to do according to what thus said the Lord, but if you're going to stay in the good graces of God and you're a servant of God, you got to do it. That's right. It's all that simple. Sometimes when people do wrong, do you wrong. The Lord said, if they ask for your forgiveness, you got to. Forgive them. Over and over. You just don't put yourself in a position to be hurt again. That's right. But you forgive them too. You forgive them. And you can't be running around, man, yeah, 20 years ago you did this to me. I ain't going to never forget it. And I tell you something, I don't like your food. You are not cursing him. You're cursing yourself. Lord told you don't let the sun go down on your anger. And you have to watch that tongue that James told you about. 
unruly evil, always saying things about people, or saying something to people to try and make people feel bad. Well, you know, I gave him a piece of my mind. Yeah, maybe you're giving God a piece of you too. Because the Lord said, every out of word that come out of your mouth is going to be required of you. I want y'all to remember that. Now, if you stand and face the rules, we're going to close out. <clears throat> Our Father which art in heaven. Our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. Thy will be done in earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our debts. And forgive us of our debts. As we forgive our debt to us. As we forgive our debt to us. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory forever. And the glory forever. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brother Torrance, Brother Torrance, they're going to be looking for you up here.